Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pure Live. It is Friday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, and you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, I know it's been a little while since I've been on here. I've been sick, so thank you all for uh, wishing me well. I saw your comments and everything. Thank you for that. Um, today we have an awesome guest, because that's what we do over here, right? Um, and, but before we get to our guest, you know what we do. We deal with our sponsors first, so here we go. Yes, they are an excellent organization. I've been a part of this organization for a while. It's been two years. I think it's been over two years now. And they actually helped me get this show going. They connected me to some wonderful people. So if you want to be a part of an organization that's going to support you and have your back, that's an organization to join. And tell them Asia sent you. And next we have Motos Cosmetics. Here we go. And I am wearing their cosmetics tonight. They are excellent. If you would like to get a discount on these cosmetics, you can go to my website, asiajamal.com or asiajamal.net. We also have a Bella eyewear. Got the shades and the blue blockers. Again, you can get 30% off on these. If you go to my website, asiajamal.com or asiajamal.net, you'll see them at the top. Motors Cosmetics and Abella Eyewear. You can get that 30% off. You're welcome. Um, real quick, I want to do some quick housekeeping. For those of you that are logged on here, if you would like to comment on the show, please go to my YouTube channel, um, Pure Live. So it is uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash P U R E L I V E. And you'll be able to comment and follow along with the show. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring in my guest for tonight. 
we got the wonderfully talented and gifted and amazing background, Kevin Shine. Hi, hey. everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining Welcome. us today. Oh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How is everybody doing? And I'm here tonight. Good. Hi, Minister Robin. So, <laughs> you guys, when, <laughs> you know that I always have my guests in their bios, let me know what's going on with them, what their background is, and wow is all I have to say about this background. So, um, <laughs> so please, what we want to do is start from the very beginning. Where are you from? Illinois. It's born and raised. Yeah. Born and raised in Illinois. Are you, are you from Chicago or are you from the, one of the suburbs? Um, I mean, you know, um, in the city, I was born in the city. I'm, I did live in the suburbs. I wanted to live in, in Park, Park, South, before they park. Um, you know, but yeah. Yeah. So um, what I would like to know, you know, before we get into what you're doing today, what kind of things was Kevin Shine into when you were younger? Did, did you start off dealing with music? Were you always into music? What were you doing before? Uh, um, what's really funny about it is my uncle is uh, named Bob Gordon. And uh, um, were raising me. Um, uh, so she, she could inform me a lot of times. She had to let me. My uncle, my uncle was actually a lot of me, and my auntie worked in record stores. So we used to gentlemen in the at first, and then eventually um, to a hundred person hostel record store. And I was really ready. And, you know, from that, I, you know, along with um, um, in situations where I, you know, I was in choirs and church, and then I started really getting into sports, and then then I drifted from sports. I was playing football, baseball. After that, really like heads up wheels into that high school. Um, um, that you know, um, I wanted class that was kind of you know, no, there was a lady named Mary Thomas who uh, can we can we try, um, can we try without maybe your earphones because the sound is okay. a little off? Okay, cool, see if it's better without. Okay, go ahead. Is that much better? Um, it's a little so, better. Well, I, I had a lady named Mary Thomas who, uh, uh, Mary Thomas who I met at High Park High School, and that, and, and um, I ended up, you know, with the, and I thought um, I, I got, I was just uh, biting, and it led to me writing for an act a young artist seeing um accepted to go to AXO um end up a competition and and I mean you're thinking that maybe this, this is something that I really like into doing some understudy work and then from me doing that understudy work I script and I went to my a pastor and, and I do this at the church and, he, and my first script turned into getting in me and, and um, that led to career in theater um, 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 I did college um, I did in theater mm -hmm. and I ended up grabbing my class and um, directing and producing then I uh, opportunity well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going right through. Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start over. So um, 
And I don't know what happened to your sound. You sounded so much clearer before it started. I, 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 you, I, I you can't. It's not that we can't hear you. The sound is just distorted. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm I don't cool. know. Um, maybe um, you can try uh, going out and coming back in. Uh, Got to go out and come back in. Try just try that. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Let's try. Because I Let's... want everybody to hear you. Okay. <laughs> While we're waiting on him, um, I know you guys probably didn't hear much of what he was saying. Um, I want him to talk more about the fact that he was in the choir because I definitely didn't know that one. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, is that better? That is better, yeah. So yeah. what I want to go back to, you said that you joined a choir. Yes. You you sang? Oh. I didn't know anything about any singing. So uh, were, were you like background singer or you tenor, first tenor, what'd you do? Um, I, I was, this is baritone. Baritone, okay. Because uh, uh, I, I could sing in range, but I, I also had, the, you know, Side, you know, my voice started evolving. Right. Now. Wow. I, I, you know, I don't, I'm not even sure how long I've known, but it's been some years and I had no idea that you sang. So, um, <laughs> is that singing in the choir, is that where the whole love for music started? I was saying, my, my uncle and my aunt blow about me. I mean, I was actually doing shows in my my, uh, my club. Uh, and me used to do, do like show. We would make up because we were sort of and all like that. And, and I met Shaka Khan. I met some people. Who, so when you you know when you're working in you know, working in there, so I'm listening to all this music. Once by so I'm. I'm Trying it out. As long as I ever played on my toys was how to take you to. Uh, um, and I actually got really into music. And I. I so really you you knew all those people early on, like when you were young. Yes. Uh, these were people that was they were coming. You know, they were coming and stuff like that. So you get to meet these people. That's cool. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So okay, so you you got to meet all these people. You got involved. I mean, you're introduced to all this stuff pretty early. That's really awesome. So right. Right. like in your mind, what were you thinking to yourself? Okay, when you were like, "This is what I think I'm gonna do with music." What was your mindset? I I wasn't sure about like I said. I didn't. I did music. I I went, I, I, I kind of, kind of, a minute, because sports was like the thing, being the athlete, being, being the guy, you know, so I, I didn't never really look at myself as that was coming. I, I always kind of thought, you know, you know sports, I, I mean, I got into baseball, I got into that. Football was really my, my thing, you know, excelled highly at football and um, was how I really, you know, get myself out there, thing that really worked for me. Hmm. So sports was your thing. Okay. Yeah, it was the thing for me. Yeah, it really opened up a lot of opportunities. Um, a uh, uh, school called Percy L. Julian were known for football, and they were known. Time and and then and when I left, I went down, down south with my granddaddy and, and we lived in Blasville, Arkansas. Got, got an opportunity to play with team, team uh, down there, and that really think I was an athlete. So when I 
moved to a walk on starter at High Park High School. And really, um, and then and later on, I ended up, you know, you know I ended up, you know, in football. Uh, so Interesting. I th thought that was where I was going to end up. That's deep. So how tall are you? I'm just curious. Um, I'm about six one. I'm about it's almost six two, but I'm six one. Um, you know, it was what was I, the way we were taught, and it was really one of those situations where I had to have a heart, you know. And I was always, always, you know, I always was very, very fast. As I was, mm. you know, and all like that, but they send you, and, and the coaches were very, well, you know, because they always wanted us. Things are going to be, be tough. Things are going to be hard. We want to see you endure through that. that I carry it on in my career. Like I don't, I don't back down from you know any situation. I, I mean, but I, I think. When I first got into what I do now, I was, you know, coming from a city like Chicago, inside of us, we're very, very emotional people. And so, um, yeah, indeed. You know, I'm that emotion, and 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 and, and so I could really be think clear. I, 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 I never really thought thought about how my evolution came. Is that I was really artist, so I always say music is, is all the emotion. So I I was very and uh, um and I had to really it wasn't a good, good thing for me. I, I would let my actions get, get me you know start starting mm -hmm. out because I, I had to. Learn. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, music, I always tell people music is my life because, you know, if you take anybody's life, you can put some kind of soundtrack to it. There's a song for everything. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of emotion involved. Interesting. Yes, and, I didn't know that and, you're and, in the sports. Yeah. Go ahead. No, it, it definitely is what makes the music, you know, open into a real, real space. Yeah. Um, uh, when I'm talking to my, my uh, artists in the organization, I always tell them you can't meaning like don't make up stuff, don't try to you know be fictitious about to be able to tap into something real, getting an emotion. So you, you have to be is and, and really be able to capture the song. Um, a lot of times I ask me to feel when I hear the song, get caught up on it, is the sonics of, of singing and the talent of singing. It's to tell them is that, that that's not it's in the music industry. It's, mm. the, 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 uh, it's the hard, hard work. It's the discipline. Uh, uh, the difference between being an entertainer and being Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I completely agree. I, I do miss the more uh, passionate songs and passionate deliveries of music, and it seems to be fading quite a bit in the music industry right now. Um, yeah, and, well, uh, well, you know, it's sad. It's sad, it's sad only because it's, they say we have gotten better. Yes, we was. Yes, we we made the playing field. We we, we also excel at level where, where people don't have, have access to really understand what it is that they're getting to. Mm. Support what is what has fast, fast made us, you know, kind of skip over, pay attention to some things, and, and or you know. Uh, about how uh, this from, from a standpoint of what uh, expect things to happen for us. So a slow, slow walk, walk kind of makes you more, more 
appreciate because you get to see everything you did to build in that plan. Mm-hmm. If you if you're if you're going too fast, yes. right? I hear that. Um, so I I saw in your bio that you were a professor at Columbia. Is that correct? Of course. So um, tell me but, about that. How did that happen? Okay, so like I told you, you uh, uh, actually uh, uh, kind of backtrack a little bit and say this. Uh, uh, High Park High School is one of my students. But I excelled in my in my studies. So when I, when I, I, I went to prep, went back to Columbia, Columbia and, and, and uh, I don't think he looked at my grades that one time. I'm so proud that I worked to get that little three point two point two I got. <laughs> and he didn't look, look at it one. This you did this, you have been doing this. And they um like I say, long, long story short, I graduated time. But, but in that last year graduate, um you know, in the last year, year of me, um, I, 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 I fell in a position, uh, um, I was getting a lot, a lot of, uh, in, you know, a friend of mine had a tour. She said, I need, need you to come in and, and look, show and tell us what you think of this, this one of the top directing students. So this, this is coming up for show is called blocking so we're blocking you know uh and i leave and the manager do you want to go on tour with us so on what kind of tour she said we're going on tour with third base digital underground and all of these people and I, and so when i went on the tour really excelled i ended up even going one called Jack the Rapper, where actually new edition. Um, mm-hmm. I, I got the and, and that, that led to me getting my position, which, which was with this guy named Carl, was at who was leaving Capitol Records, and okay. he brought me in. So I, I want to pause is, right there. Um, I want to pause right there. I'm going to take a break. While I take a break, I want you to um, check your connection because you're coming in and out um, with your uh, sound. I'm really trying to figure this out. <laughs> I don't know if you connected to Wi-Fi or not, but people are yeah. struggling. They're like, man, you need Everything is uh, looks great. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, you hey, look I'm- good. We just can't hear you that great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a small break. Um, for those of you that are on YouTube, that's what I want you to do. Subscribe. Thank you. And now we're going to take a short little break. Here we go. Jamal Rogers, and I'm a singer, songwriter, choreographer, voice actor, and I'm the creator and talk show host of Pure Live. Pure is an acronym for perfectly undefined raw elegance. So naturally, we want our content to be pure, raw, and elegant. It airs live every Friday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook. And if you'd like to see all of the episodes, you can reach it at asiajamal.com, A-S-I-A-J-A-M-A-L.com. Or if you'd like to be on the show, you can reach me at asia at asiajamal.com. Hope to see you soon. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game called Find the Fake. 
So the way that this game goes is we have statements that Kevin has provided for us. And you have to guess which statement is the fake. If you guess correctly, you can win a prize. So pay close attention. We will play this more than once during the show, but here we go. All right, so what I want you guys to do is in the chat, in the comments, I want you to go ahead and put your guesses in and I will be paying attention. You will have another opportunity to take a look at the options and a, a little later in the show. And then I will let you know, well, actually Kevin will let you know, which one is the fake? Let's see people guessing over here. Um, and um, for those of you that are, are logged on, um, I would like you to uh, log on to the YouTube under Pure Live. Um, it is youtube.com and it is forward slash C forward slash Pure Live, P U R E L I V E. And um, that will um, help me to be able to see your comments and I can post them. All right. Now let's get back into the show. I got Kevin. Looks like Kevin is back. Hi, Kevin. It's better. Can oh, everybody yeah. hear me better? That is so much better. Oh, <laughs> okay, that makes had, me happy. Okay. I had to go on the phone. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. It was, I had to go on the phone so I can, you know, Make this a little bit better. Hey, so where you, where you want me to start or where should we? Okay. You know. So we were talking about um, how you ended up being a professor at Columbia. And then we didn't really hear a whole lot after that. So let's let's go with okay. that. Let's start there. Okay. So so basically what you can you open is, is like I said, long story short, um, um, I ended up getting a, I ended up getting a, you know, you know, I ended up moving into a job with AM Records, which, which led to a uh, position at AM Records. Uh, um, that led to me kind of venturing into music, really. Uh, and then um, I found out that um, Switch was, you know, trying to, to get some internships and build their own situation to help them. Um, and um, at the time, I helped and pull off their first music conference vice presidents of major labels and all like that um the, the next year that i came in the uh chairperson of the department phyllis johnson approached me and she said i heard and you're it's packed every night and i said yeah she said i, I want to come and watch your class and she watched my class that i was doing for the students and and she said that she hired me on the spot and she said, I want to make you the chairperson of the organization. It's called hmm. Developing Record Deal Strategies that I want to build around you. And that was how I ended up teaching up. Um, when I left Columbia, I left with a 70% success ratio of getting my students in the music industry and watching a lot of people get jobs and stuff that have moved on. That really uh, spearheaded a lot of what uh, you know, I've become today in terms of my career, but further than that, um, I, I wouldn't be where I am without a gentleman named Ernie Singleton because I made a lot of mistakes in my career, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. And what Ernie taught me was is having someone there to guide you, having someone there to kind of help you get more, you know, direction. I remember making my first big mistake, and Ernie had. Uh, um, me because he and he told them he said you see a problem 
I just see a kid who needs some direction. Um, mm -hmm. Dad, I want to let you know I got your back, and I'm going to stand up for you. I'm going to give you a chance to learn this. But you're taking a lot of hits right now, and I know you might be running a little, little by yourself, um, but mentorship. He said, so I'm going to do something for you. I'm, I'm going to give you my name. He said, but what I, I want you to do, I give it to you. You got to give it to somebody else. And so I literally built my those words. Wow. Okay. It's good to have people have your back, isn't it? Yes. It makes it, a it world was of a difference. Very emotional moment for me. Very emotional. Mm -hmm. When you're failing, you don't want to fail. You don't, don't want to feel like you're doing wrong by people. Um, raised right. better. And I know that my mom raised me a certain type of way. And I know that that, that wasn't in BI here, you know, doing things that were going to hurt people or harm people, but give people an opportunity. I, I, I tell people all the time, I am the person that I was looking for and motivates mm. me every day. Okay. Okay. Well, I got your motivation. We got uh, some other things over here. So um, <laughs> I was sent this. Tell me how this went down. Black Mogul Magazine, Music Mogul Legend, amazing. So, um, so what happened with this? How did how did this come about? Well, well, the gentleman that you know runs it, his name is Troy and mine. Um, he runs promotions. He has a record company does promotion with a lot of various events. Um, and he has this this magazine that he does to hype highlight that he feel is doing things that you should know about I mean, he tries to find people that you may people that you know you may not have you know you might overlook because it's behind time we don't we're not the stars so we're not supposed to be in front of the camera we ain't supposed to be supposed to be the one that support and create these people but terry's like no i feel like you should be that person um, and you should be because what you've been doing for nine, nine years, heart and soul to people and helping them grow their careers. And I just hope, I just want to do something to let people know who you are and what you're doing. That's amazing. That's great. You know, there's so many people out there that never get any recognition for what they do. So that's great that you got some recognition there. Um, and in the article and in the bio that you sent me, there's so much there. There's so many people that you've worked with. Um, do you have a favorite that you've worked with uh, through your career? Um, I, 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 you know, and it's, it's, you know, I'm gonna just say this to be honest. It's sad. Um, that I think the most out of every one of those people was R. Kelly. Um, and I you know just very sad with a brother you know I, you know that 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 is happening to generational uh talent um it just you, you, there'll never be another like in that process of working with him um um that's when i got my first grammy number when i really had an opportunity to build my brand my name um, i had a chance to meet to learn so much about music um during the period of time working with him I mean, Wayne Williams, who was at the time, um, and really just, you know, that, that really, you know, doing the A&R work got me out there nationally. So I don't, you know, so, you know, I have to give credit to it because they were, were the ones who really kind of started, you know, me down that threshold, gave me my, you know, my first, first brand in terms of putting my name out, out there nationally. Yeah. Yeah, it is sad. It's unfortunate what what went down there because you're right. I mean, musically, it's it's you know legendary what was done um, under him. Yes, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, so many so many names here. You know, Diary, K. Michelle, um, Kim Burrell, all of these different people. Did you ever get starstruck with any of the artists that you worked with? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't think, uh, you know, I think you have to be 
very careful you work with people that of the status um you know you got to be very careful about that position that i was in um was one where i was i was into a and r their projects and, and i so they were looking at me to kind of help it mold what was going on so you have to keep that now of course if there's a person i've always wanted to work with that i definitely was thankful that god put it you know in my life to give me it uh because i just think she's incredible and you know of course i was extremely excited opportunity uh to even uh to be able to say that i and all the project or it you know what's with who it kimberell oh yeah what a phenomenal voice yeah. <laughs> yes i i use her music to to warm up with because like that's the ultimate warm-up you know <laughs> doing all of the things that she does all the riffs she does it's, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah oh yeah she, absolutely she, she's in, she's incredible but also working the, you know the the things i'm really proud of is like the people who i helped develop early on like getting that early on chance to work with a Kanye West and getting that early interns uh, uh, who actually did you no know, no scrubs. To, I mean, I mean, um, and, and did no scrubs and the interns who did Anaconda and you know, of course, Kanye. Y'all know Kanye, but a chance to be a part of those early the Jacob Lattimore and watching their development and all like that and being a part of that early, you know, part of their career. Yes, it's just you know it was dope yeah absolutely that's amazing um so what i want to get into we're going to talk about this right here writing sessions america so you've done all of this work you you've been around all of these great people and now you're doing writing sessions america will you break down what that is okay well we we are a singer songwriter producer you know producers and engineers and we're an organization it's a platform of what we call indie use the word indie artist because the word indie artist kind of said you know it was about people saying okay they don't have management they don't have a label they don't have nothing and so or you know or they're or, or that they're not with a major so, but what kind of symbolizes almost like a homeless kid. And I I, I, I don't you want to send it. And so what I try to do with Writing Sisters in America is I try to send a message of being in, because it teaches you right on, uh, right up front, you are a for-profit business. I said for creators, when you look at yourself as a for-profit business, then just as a situation, because the artistic, part is really more part of what your company does who, who you are you have more than what you do so so we work with them on the creative we work with them on the business we help people you know we put them in touch with professionals we help to understand how to you know navigate the industry and this is a very membership this is membership based when it started but it, it grew into a membership based organization that I've been and we're pretty much all over the country now and we have uh, you know and, and years ago uh we had COVID kicked in and prior to COVID, i used to use ice fly to 10 different cities to meet up with my members mm. and now it where we, we now do everything virtually so i get it you know it made it, and it, what i love about it is when i was flying i always felt like like when i would leave like man i I don't want to leave because I'm, I'm for my members. I'm not going to be able to be, be hands on with them like I want. And what Zoom did, it is able to connect to them more and be around, around them more and talk to them more. And so, you, you know, I don't want to say thank God for COVID, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it did help. It opened up yeah. a lot of doors and, and it did make me look at what I do in, in a different way so that can really personally be in connection with my people and we're a very organization um and we 
but we're very honest with each other. We 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 creating. We deal a lot with music sync and licensing. We uh, we have a lot of great for our organization that work with our with our membership and really helping them better understand. How, you know, and I'm just proud. You know that, that I have some really 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 um, um, talents I get. I play their records for anybody I can, can play their records for because I want people. To we know these records virtually. Mm. Like we're not in studio together. So you might have some real writing with somebody in Atlanta, writing with somebody in LA, writing with somebody in Canada. <laughs> right. You know, and they're creating songs together. They're listening to each other's song. It's a moment. Uh, if you are out there, you're creative and you don't have to, it's not a starter like situation. I've been writing for years, I'm writing on different projects that come into our organization just you know it's always about being a part of the, the workshop and and, the, and always you know working on yourself and it, and it helps when you're around people who are equally uh serious and, and, and on the same mindset as you about being great yeah absolutely that sounds great and i have been on calls uh with all these great people i see your people are in the chat over here um, and you guys feel free to ask questions or, um, you know, say statements or whatever. I will post them as I have. I saw Chloe and what's it say? Melanated God. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. I will see all of your comments. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. What made you think to yourself, you know what, this is the direction I need to go in. And I, I heard you say, you know, you don't want to say thank God for COVID, but, you know, it, it's like, fortunately, there was something positive that came out of that. A lot of people are recognizing what you can do virtually. So what I want to know from you is what made you say, you know what, this is my calling. This is the direction I want to go in. Well, well like I said, to, to um, reading a magazine, going through a lot of hits, um, taking a lot of hits. I mean, <laughs> I I thought I had really, really burnt my bridges and and messed myself up in this Chicago. I had so so many people were on my back about so many different things. Things and then reading this magazine, I read about Ernie Singleton. And he was he was talking about how he had helped Gladys Knight and people. But the last paragraph it said, and he loves to help young ex executives. Is where are are you? <laughs> and I happened to be volunteering. I was in charge of the uh, panels and the uh, uh, and the showcases. Kenny play at the luncheon, and one of the executives walk up to me. She said, "I got this record. I really need you to play it because my boss is here, and I need him to hear this record." And I said, "What's the record?" And it was "Love Overboard." Like, like I, just, I said, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell my sound man to play it." She said, "Okay, play it." And she said, "Can you?" Play Play it again. I just for it. And she said, Man, so I th thank you so much. She said, My boss wants to meet you. And I walk. And so when I meet him, I'm 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 totally stunned because I can't believe to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but after being around him, talking to him, um, hanging um, he 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 you know, you know, he really took me in, he really gave me some effort. He really he spanked my butt a little bit. He told me where I made my mistakes at. And then, the, you know, one night he was at an event and someone was bad mouthing me. And he Ooh. said, You see a problem. I see a, a problem. I, I see a kid with the, that needs some direction. And he took me, he said that to me. He said, You know, I'm going to give you my name. You're going to be like a son to me. I'm going to really help you. You know, one of the things I need you to do, if I give it to you, you got to give it to someone else. So that's someone else in America. That's that's mm. what sparked that. That's what spawned this to happen is because that I'm helping. I'm the one looking for the help and I was looking for help and I couldn't find a Kevin Shaman until I found Ernie Singleton. But that spawned me, uh, sparked me to really look at the importance of, you know, uh, what do you really want, want to be known for, Kevin, and career, as you said, in my resume and all of that um mm -hmm. I, I i i that i 
have because he really took me under his wing. And Ernie's, all of the people under Ernie, all people who are like vice presidents or in major positions and all like that. And they took Ernie's gonna, you're, you're gonna be something special because there's no one that is that don't go on to do something great. And so uh, last year uh, at a conference, I got to honor him in front of my people for the first time. Mm -hmm. And it was my um for just believing in me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him to see what he um because he cre he he basically just offered words and that's why we have to be very careful of power. Just offer those Absolutely. words. I'm giving it to you. You gotta give it to someone else. That built a mm -hmm. whole organization. You That's know? wonderful. I'm glad you listened. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, I always I talk about Ernie. I have to be honest, I, I have emotional moments when I talk about it because I can feel mm -hmm. the, the thing, the pain I was going through, the things I was going through. Um, when he uh when he took me in, I could feel that. Even to this day I could feel it. Mm -hmm. And um I think that keeps me yeah. Focus. It keeps me on edge. It keeps me thinking about how I can better improve my people. You know, we have a saying: we say "squad up." You know, and in the organization, and we also have another <laughs> uh, saying: uh, "You might be chat. great by yourself, but we are better together." You know, and and those are things we live by. I know that's right. Absolutely. So let's take some time to talk about this event coming up. Time to shine. Uni 2020. Talk about this, please. So this event hey, is sure in Nashville. Oh, you can't hear me? You can't hear me anymore, Can y'all still hear me? We can hear you. I, I can't hear y'all for some reason. Oh, buddy. Uh-oh. I don't know what happened. Oh, wow. You can't hear this us anymore. Crazy. It is. Oh boy. I hope you can uh, start hearing us soon. I wonder if uh, if you received a phone call. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to tell him to go um, out and come back in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back in. Yeah. Okay. While we're waiting on him to come back in, I'm gonna leave this up here. It's time to shine. Uh, let's see. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now, Kevin? Yeah, I hear you now. I hear you. All right. I'm back. I hear you. Great. So we're looking at this flyer here. Time to shine. Yes. Tell us about this event. Um. Well. This is the ninth annual conference. Um, a good friend of mine named Randy uh, Randy Fling who works at Rolling Out Magazine here. In, uh, that is, a, you know, uh, a major magazine that you know is black owned, of course. Um, and he just he just said, you know, you need to do a conference and you need to have an event where you can really celebrate your people, but celebrate the industry and bring the industry in to see. So we started, you know, off doing these events like nine years ago uh we did our first four in atlanta georgia then we did our next two in los angeles california and for the last two years we did them virtually uh on zoom and this is going to be our first time back physically again uh doing it i want to also give a major 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 uh shout out to um i always call her my sister but she's not my real sister but she's definitely like like a sister to me uh, Nina Teapot Owens, who is uh, spearheading uh, as our honorary chairperson this year, um, all of everything that's going to take place out there. Nina works uh, with Kay Michelle and Indy Irie, and she's uh, Indy. She used to be a member of our organization. Can you believe that this is a mm. person who did not really have the confidence in herself, and she called me out of the blue one year and just said, "I, I want to be in the business." and she did oh, our wow. first event out in Nashville, and it was really like you know one of those things where um, 
I, I just, I could see something in her spirit. Mm -hmm. She graduated valedictorian from SAE. She went on to help uh, several companies out there in Nashville be successful. And she's built herself up to be one of the faces in Nashville as a black woman. And wow. I'm just proud to say that I'm a part of her, her, her career. I'm a part of her, you know, I've been in her, I, I, this, 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 this conference, this, this is how deep this is, right? Her husband proposed to her at one of our conferences. Oh, wow. How amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Memories. Right. So, you know, that's how deep this conference is. When you say family, you know, I told him when he brought it up to me, I said, you can't propose to her somewhere on the island. You got to bring that to the conference and do that in front of her family, all of her family. And he, he, and, and, uh, I'm, I'm so proud, you know, she, she found somebody like him and we have been a part of that. We've been a part of her graduations. We've been a part of her, ma her weddings. And now she's, um, going to be spearheading this, this event and it's going to be incredible. Uh, we try to invite, we bring the industry to us. This is a, a gathering, a fellowship of, of our members along, and we invite other creators. If you are a singer songwriter producer, this is a, the kind of environment you really want to be in because you're going to get to not only meet your peers and be around some incredible folks, uh, but you're going to meet a lot of great professionals, get a lot of great information. And, you know, and there's something I said to one of my members yesterday, the other day, because we were talking about opportunities. I said, well, I, I don't I don't like to talk about opportunities. I like to talk about options. Mm. If you work up, you work to you work to earn your slot then you want to have options. You don't just want to just chase opportunities. I hear that. I know that's right. So it, we are getting close to that time. And I want to give you an opportunity to give your closing uh, remarks and your words of wisdom. But before we do that, I promise that we would run that game one more time. See who guessed correctly. And I think I saw some correct answers in that chat. But we're going to run this one more time. Here we go with Find the Fake. Kevin, tell us which one was the fake. The fake was managed Jacob Lattimore. Uh, all of you know Jacob is on the TV show The Shy. Um, I did not manage him, but I am definitely the person who discovered him and brought him to Chive Records. Awesome. So I see a lot of you guys got it right. So here's <laughs> what I will do for you people. Okay. My email address um, is asia at asiajamal.com the first person that emails me to let me know that you won i will send you a prize first person right. okay you said because you got quite a few huh <laughs> I got quite a few <laughs> they they must know you they must know I, you. I appreciate that that's my family. that's my family we travel in packs that's that's what i say we travel in packs hey, you roll deep <laughs> <laughs> So here it is again, Asia at asiajamal.com. First one to hit me up, we'll win a prize. All right, y'all. Now, we are at our last few minutes of the show. Kevin, I want you to share your closing words of wisdom for everyone. Um, you know, I've been, I guess I've been saying this a lot lately, and I just want to be consistent. Um, I just want everybody to know that as things are accelerating and moving faster and Technology is a beautiful thing. Um, social media is a beautiful thing. Streaming is definitely a beautiful thing. But also, let's just keep in mind that uh, something very important has been taken out of our industry, and that's called the price point. And and so, music is is right now in a, in, a, in a very in a tailspin. Record labels have uh, licensed their materials to these aggregates, and these aggregates are paying us pennies. 
Uh, social media is definitely important to us, but it doesn't directly control whether you make money or not. What controls whether you make money or not, first of all, is your ability to make great music, great product, to make a great brand of yourself, and then at the and then your relationships. This is a relationship business. And I have a saying that I use all the time. I don't do 10 things to do 10 things. I do one thing that does 10 things. Hmm. Okay. And people don't always want you when you need you when you need them. Sometimes they need you when you don't need them. And that's not a that's that means that's a saying to say if you work on making people making yourself self-sufficient where people need you then you can be part of that options that i just talked about you don't want to be chasing opportunities you want to be chasing you want to have options and you don't want to be out here just basing your career on falsified likes and followers you want to base it on the people that were meant for you so what if you get 100 people what if you get 200 people what if you get do you know if you had 200 people who came to your show every night, you can make a living off that? Mm -hmm. So don't get lost in these, these millions and millions. I know people who got thousands and millions. They not, but they can't bring 20 people to a room. So don't sacrifice your artistry. Don't chase the numbers. And always remember to, to steer flowers to the people who give flowers to you. There's a lot of fans, but those fans, when you use the word fan, that means people who are openly supporting you financially, who are openly supporting you and coming and telling others about you and helping you to build your brand. They are not just likes and followers, they're people. I know that's right. Facts. You were speaking that wisdom right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and just so y'all know, <laughs> y'all were on it. And we do have somebody that came to me first. This is the one that came to be first. So that's the one that's winning <laughs> the prize. Depo. <laughs> Depo is there. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> I saw it come across my screen. I won. Um, <laughs> so I will connect with you and we're going to pick out a prize for you. Congratulations. All right, you guys. So that's the end of the show for tonight. Um, remember to embrace God's perfect design, which is you. Till next time, we'll be right back here Friday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Asia. And thank you to everybody who came out tonight. Um, please continue to support Pure, uh, Pure Alive. And please continue to support Asia. Jamal, she is incredible. Thank you. Good night. Although we be